Okay, let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. And this is actually a great program, uh, the CLEP program that is. So if you're watching this video, um, I'm assuming that you're studying for um, the CLEP College Algebra exam or maybe other CLEP exams. And, and as you probably well know, the CLEP exam um, basically allows you to test out and get full college credits um, for these particular um, subjects. So if you can pass the CLEP College Algebra exam, for example, you know, you're going to get credit for that, you're going to skip that, so you're going to be saving time and money. So it's absolutely well worth, uh, well worth it to study really hard and pass these exams. And, you know, the value of passing these exams are, is tremendous. So they're not going to give away, you know, they're not going to make the exam so easy where, you know, anybody can do it because that's just not, a, you know, fair to the people who are going to actually, you know, spend a year or a semester, you know, retaking or taking college algebra. So there's a lot to know in college algebra. Uh, before we get started, I'd let you know, uh, if you find it, you like my teaching style, I am a math teacher, teacher from middle school through college. Um, so I've been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, if you like my teaching style, I offer a full comprehensive uh, CLEP College Algebra exam uh, prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video, um, but you can check that out later. But with that being said, let's take a look at a problem that you're going to be able to want to know how to do for the CLEP exam, the CLEP College Algebra exam. So here I have a function, and what I'd like you to do is tell me the domain of this function in terms of the set of real numbers. Okay, so I want to know the domain of this function in terms of the set of the real numbers. Now, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, if you're already like, okay, I'm already lost, then continue to watch because I'm going to go over this. Now, this is going to be a little like micro lesson on this particular topic, but uh, a lot of these videos that I make are kind of like little pop quizzes to kind of check your understanding. One, you're going to learn something, but just because you understand my explanation to this problem doesn't mean that you know you should feel completely comfortable, especially if you didn't get this problem uh, correct the first time. So if you want to pause the video and give it a whirl, uh, that's good. But with that being said, let's get right to it. All right, so here we have a function, and I want to know the domain in terms of the real numbers. So the domain is basically what I'm allowed to uh, input into this function. So <clears throat> think of uh, think of the domain as kind of like, let's say here's a sink in your house. Here's a little faucet. Here's little things. And you have the drain, right? So here's a sink. And you're saying, what is this guy doing? What is he talking about a sink and etc.? So here you have the plumbing in your house, right? So what do you throw into your garbage disposal in your sink? Well, you throw whatever, lemon peels, whatever the case is, you throw in this, you throw in that. And you pretty much know that all this stuff that you throw in will make it through and pass through no problem, okay? Now, would you throw in a hammer, for example? <laughs> or would you throw in a shoe, for example, into your garbage disposal? No, it, you could not, you can't put this stuff into the garbage disposal, it will break, right? Uh, so your garbage disposal can't handle these inputs, same idea with functions, same idea with functions. Some functions can handle anything, which would be all real numbers. Now, the real numbers are the numbers on a real number line. So you got zero, right? And then you got one, two, negative one, negative two. All, all of these guys here are real numbers. So you should know this. All this terminology that I'm talking about, you should know this for this particular level of mathematics. Okay. So hopefully this is review. If it's not, don't don't stress out don't freak out here you can you know if you're learning from me that's great uh, again just find yourself a good learning program a good teacher to learn from if you like my style again i offer a complete course if you don't know this or if you got that don't worry about it you can but you're going to have to read learn this okay so let's get back to this problem all right so the input into a function is what we call the domain of the function all right the domain so Again, the domain is what you're allowed to plug into the function without breaking the function. So how do we know what, you know, uh, what things break a function? Now, we're talking specifically about the real numbers. I don't want to kind of go off on a tangent and talk about the complex number system because then that would change the problem a bit. But let's just talk about the real numbers. Okay, there's basically uh, two conditions that are going to make this 
uh, function blow up. Okay, think of it as like our hammer or our or shoe thrown into garbage disposal. Like what things that if you try to throw into any function that would make it blow up? Well, there's two. Okay, so the first is if you throw in a value into a function, okay, and you end up with a negative value underneath a square root, that's a no-no. You can't do that. Okay, so whatever input caused a negative uh, the uh, a negative value underneath a square root is not allowed. Think of it as a hammer to our garbage disposable. The second thing that will blow a function up is if we end up with a zero in the denominator. So any value that would cause the uh, denominator value to be zero is a no-no. Okay, so we have to basically look at the function and figure out what values, if any, will cause any one of these conditions, either both or one or none. Okay, so every function is different, right? So let's go ahead and get into this. So hopefully this makes sense to you. That's the whole idea of this video. So we have two situations here. Okay, I have a square root uh, in the in the numerator. So basically, this is going to be. We're gonna basically have two problems in one. Okay, so I'm like, okay, I have the square root here, and this guy just told me that that I can never have a negative in uh, in the square root. You can have zero, okay, um, but and obviously positive numbers. So how can I how can I take a look at this situation? Be like, well, I have two x minus one, right? Two x minus one. That's the value underneath this square root. So I'm just say, well, you know, how can I in ensure that any value of x would not cause a negative situation. Well, let's use an inequality. So we, we're going to say, hey, 2x minus 1, when are you greater than or equal to 0? When is your your value, okay, the value of 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0? Because what, what does that mean? It's a positive number or 0. It's okay to be 0 in the numerator. So remember, in fractions, 0 over 3 is a 0. That's totally fine, okay? If you have 3 over 0, your calculator will blow up. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> your calculator will be like, uh, this is undefined. You can never divide by 0. So 0 in the denominator um, is not good. All right, We don't want to have that situation. But 0 in the numerator is OK, because 0 divided by 3 is 0. Okay, So it's like having 0 dollars, right? 0 dollars and we have 3 people. And we're like, hey, how are we going to split up? zero dollars well we all each get zero dollars if we have three dollars but no people how do we split that up it doesn't make any sense okay so that's undefined all right so let's continue on here so i'm going to say okay 2x minus 1 when you greater than or equal to zero i don't care about if i get a zero in the numerator because that's okay so we're going to solve this basic inequality so that's going to be 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to zero hopefully you know how to solve inequalities that's definitely something that you're going to want to know for the CLEP exam. So we basically kind of solve them like equations. There's some other twist to them, but you're going to have to review that. I don't want to be teaching so many different concepts, although I'm using different skills for this problems. This is a whole other topic in and of itself dealing with uh, inequalities. Okay, so when the values uh, 2x minus 1, all right, as long as I plug in values that are greater than or equal to one half, this whole entire value will be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's good. All right, so so we have this as part of our domain. All right, that we need to think about. Now let's focus on the denominator down here. Okay, so what value of x will blow this thing up? Well, we don't want x to be 0, right? So x cannot be 0. So we have two conditions here. We, we can't have x um, be equal to 0, and we want x's to be uh, greater than or equal to 1 half. So let's take a look at a number line. It's a good way to look at the domain. Think of this kind of stuff. So here we have 0, and here I have 1 half, right? Yeah, let me write this better. 1 half. So I want all x's that are greater than or equal to one half and uh, here x cannot be equal to zero okay so I have two conditions I have x cannot be 
equal to 0 and all x's have to be greater than or equal to 1 half. So this right here, this greater than or equal to 1 half kind of supersedes uh, this 0 over here. So this right here, okay, because I need all x's already to be greater than or equal to 1 half. Yeah, I got 1 over here, this 0. In other words, I have all kinds of values down here negative and positive that will work in my denominator. Okay, the x can be anything. However, if I use some of these values, like these values over here, it's going to blow this thing up. So I have to use the um, condition that will satisfy both the numerator and denominator. So this is it. All x is greater than or equal to one half. That's the domain. So there's different ways we can write that. So we can say the domain is greater than or equal to one half. That's one way of doing it. You can also do it this way. Use an interval notation. You could use a bracket like this. We have a one half comma to positive infinity open bracket. That's the domain as well. So that's interval notation. Again, lots of little things to know. But functions were absolutely critical you know, for the CLEP college algebra exam, you need to know them, okay? You need to be a uh, master of them, this and many other topics. But uh, anyways, let's go and wrap this video up. So hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, you know, if you like learning from me, and that's the key with anything, you know, find a teacher that you like, you know, that's clear and understandable to you. So, you know, if you resonate with my teaching style, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I literally got hundreds of videos. This is what I do. I'm very passionate about mathematics and helping those uh, with it. So hopefully you consider subscribing. If you want to check out my CLEP College Algebra uh, test prep course, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Hey, if you liked the video, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, um, I try to read as many comments as I can on my videos. I uh, get a lot of comments that that's, you know, I'm grateful for. But your comments are um, what makes me better. So, you know, reading your feedback, you know, I learn about my own uh, teaching style. Plus, if you have questions, it gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the CLEP College Algebra exam. It's super important. It's a great opportunity for you. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me. And have a great day.